that destroys every yoke. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Someone said it breaks the yoke. And it does. Right. But it does more than that. It goes a step beyond. Amen. Praise the Lord. If something's broke, we might try to fix it. Yes. Amen. Come on. I've had things that have broken before and I've tried to put them back together with super glue. Come on. Or monkey tape. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But when you destroy it, you say there ain't no fixing that. Yeah, really? Oh, Amen. Really? There ain't no, and I've done some stuff like that before. Amen. <laughs> there wasn't no fixing it. He destroys the yoke. There's no fixing it. Amen? Right. So thankful this morning for that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Last week we talked about a place called Bethel. Amen? Yeah. And we, just, we talked about how the, the world that we live in today, and I say this of our nation because this is where I live. Amen? Right. That America has lost their respect for authority. Come on. And lost their respect for God. True. Amen. True. And I told you that today the house of God is treated like any other place. Amen. Right. It's treated like a just like a social club or a oh. pool hall yeah. or, or Walmart True. or whatever. And I mentioned the fact that some of this, probably the most of this blame, rests upon the shoulders of pastors and board members. Mm -hmm and denominations that have decided to make the church so comfortable for the world wow. and they're so comfortable when they come that it has led them to regard it no different than they do other places of the world. Amen? Amen. If you're not right with Jesus, you ain't supposed to be comfortable in that church. Amen? Amen. You're supposed to feel the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen? Amen? When did Brother Billy get saved? When I felt the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. When did Brother Billy get his heart right with the Lord? When he had strayed some. When I felt the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. Without the convicting power of the Spirit of God. Amen? The, the Bible says that godly sorrow leadeth to repentance. Amen? Conviction leads you to an altar of repentance repentance. But the church today has thrown all of that aside and has did her best to be more like the world in order to win the world. And that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at the danger of the unequal yoke. Hallelujah. Turn with me, if you will, to Romans the 12th chapter. Romans the 12th chapter. We have made the world so comfortable in our churches. And number one, and the worst thing of all, they see no need for change in their own life. Right. Amen. Come on. Brother Hinton used to say, You've got to convince somebody that they're lost before you can get them found. Right. And if you do not convince them of their need Come on. for Jesus Christ and his salvation power, then they'll go right along thinking they're okay the way that they are. And that's the kind of sermons that comes from the modern day new age hip and conform and transform to the worldly style church that we see Amen. today. Amen. Right. And there's a danger in this, a grave danger yes. in this. Amen. The modern day church says to win the world, we must be like the world. Now think about that way of thinking. That's exactly what they teach. Yeah. Our atmosphere, our music, even our Bible must be more contemporary and more friendly to the world. Amen? My Lord. But what does the Bible say about this? What did Jesus do in His ministry? What did He instruct His disciples to do? And what has He instructed His church to do? Romans 12 and 2. The Bible says, and this is, this is we're going to read a few scriptures today that is sort of like, I guess we could call it the forgotten word for the modern day church because these are not scriptures you will hear when you turn on your television this morning. Right. Amen? Amen? Nine times out of ten. Amen? Oh. I'm going to leave a little leeway there. Amen? Yeah. And if you turned on SBN, Brother Swaggart's Network, you might have heard it. Amen? Right. But I'm talking about the other ones. Nine times out of ten, you don't hear it. These scriptures here. And be not conformed. 
That word conformed, Brother Dave, means to fashion alike. It means to create similar to this world. Be not conformed to this world, the writer writes. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now within this one passage of Scripture, we learn that it is not acceptable to God that we conform to the world. I'm not teaching you some kind of deep theological thing that you have to go to cemetery or seminary, excuse me, to find out. Amen? In this one scripture, Brother Dave, we find out that it is not acceptable with God for us to conform to the world to win the world. Amen? Amen. It is not good. We find this out right here in this one scripture. Right. We find out that it is not good to be conformed to the world to try and win the world. We find out that it is not the perfect will of God for us to conform to the world to win the world. Amen. I told you last Sunday right. that there was a time when those that were broken hearted, those that were sin broken, those that were bound by drugs and alcohol and sin and the things of hell, they would see the church as a beacon in the night, a lighthouse in the storm, a place, a shelter to run to where they knew they could find somebody that would lead, that would help them pray at an old fashioned altar and make things right with God. Now they come to this institution. And they find as much of the world in there mm -hmm. as there is that they left outside the door. Amen. They find an atmosphere that is more like a rock concert. Right. Something that is more comfortable to their flesh. And many times, more times than not, they leave right. the same or worse than they were when they came. Worse, really. Because at least when they came, they felt like they needed to make things right with God. Right. Now when they leave, they see no need to make things right with God. Because the church has become so worldly, they have blurred the lines. You can't tell the right from the wrong and the good and the bad and the black and the white this morning. I still believe that there is a difference between good and bad. I still believe there is a difference between right and wrong. Brother Dave, I still believe that the church should still be different than the world. Amen? I still believe there is a danger in compromise today. Listen to me. The freedom that you enjoy today in this nation. Yes was built on the back of men and women who refused to compromise their freedom. Exactly. This Bible that I hold in my hands today that has survived over 400 years has survived on the back of the, of the backs of men and women who refused to compromise to the world and to the religion. Amen. 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 Right. The truth that we know today was carried on the backs of men and women who refused to compromise. Yes. That song that the kids sung right before we began our sermon this morning. The wicked king threw them in a fire. They would not bow. They would not bend. You can say, oh, but Brother Billy, if you compromise, you can get more in. Yeah, but what would I be getting them into? Yeah. Amen? If you win the world with a compromised message and a compromised gospel, they will be little roots, if any, and blown about by every wind of doctrine that comes along. Amen. Yeah. And that's what we're seeing. Exactly. Yeah, we are. That's what we're seeing. Yeah. We're seeing a church world that even if they believe in Jesus, well, it's okay if you don't because we're all striving for the same place. Amen. It's okay if your God is not the same as my God. Oh. All right.
roads lead to Him. No, 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 no. There's not but one road that leads to Him. Uh -huh. Only one way that leads to Him. Uh -huh. The only way you'll get to Him uh, is by way of the Via Della Rosa, by the way of the cross of Calvary. Amen. Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, there ain't but one way to get oh, to Him praise. today. And it'll do you no good to pray to His mama. His mama would have went to hell had it not been for the blood that He shed on the cross of Calvary. Mary got to heaven the same way you're going to get to heaven today. And that's through the blood-stained cross of her son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. It'll do you no good to bow your knee Amen. to the world. Amen. As a matter of fact, it'll do you harm. Irreparable. Irreparable. Yeah. Harm today. Hallelujah. But the church world's mentality... And the books that we put out, not we, but that they put out. The popular books tell us, they instruct us. Brother least they instruct us that we must be more contemporary than we are yeah. if we're going to build a church. And when they talk about building a church, they ain't talking about His church, they're talking about their church. Amen. Right. They're talking about filling the seats. Right. Amen. Right. We have to have more up-to-date music. We have to have more up-to-date messages. We have to have more up-to-date and charismatic preachers. Amen? We have to have a more up-to-date, which is stupid as it can be, version of the Word of God. Amen? So that the people can understand it better. We have to be more modernized. In other words, we must be sick to win the sick. Amen? Amen? The Bible says that to be carnally minded is death and it is enmity with God. True. The world is still enmity with God. The world is not okay. The things of the world are not okay. You cannot take things that are evil and wicked and not holy and slap the name of Jesus on them and, and consider that they've been They've been converted into something holy. Amen? Come on. True. Compromise will never, ever win Amen. the lost. Our music today is so worldly you can't tell the difference between the two, between what's Amen. for Jesus and what ain't. That's right, brother. Amen? Say it. So they change the music. They change the setting. They change the mood. Yeah. And it's all about making the people more comfortable. Come on, and to do this, you'll have to compromise. Right. To do this, you will have to compromise. True. Amen? True. To do this, as we see them do it today, you will have to make the house of the Lord feel like something other than the house of the Lord. All right. Amen? True. Because God's Spirit and His presence still demand respect. Amen. And in His light are dark. Our darkness is revealed. Yes. Sins, hidden sins, are brought to light in His light. Amen. When we get into His Spirit and whenever we get into His holiness, yes. we realize how unholy we are. Amen. Amen. True. But in order to get our churches full, we must make them feel good. Amen. Mm. Our music, let's put in some strobe lights. Let's get us some drama teams. Yes. Let's have movie night. Let's have some book discussion groups. Instead of having Bible study, let's grab one of the more popular Christian authors and bring their book into the church. Let's discuss that. Let's have our sports teams and our dance teams. Let's bring in some Christian comedians to make everybody laugh. Let's take down our crosses so that they don't offend the Muslim that might come in off of the street. Amen? Let's take down our let's take down any religious symbols because we don't want to make people feel bad. Let's make them feel oh Lord help us is right, Brother Dave. Lord help us. Turn to Second Corinthians, the sixth chapter. Second Corinthians, the sixth chapter. This past week I was contacted by a church consultant consultant. And for $200, he would come in here one Sunday morning, and y'all wouldn't know who he was. I, I, I don't know if I would, because I didn't get this far into the discussion of the thing. He would come in just as a visitor. 
And he would sit and he would take notes. Yeah. You know, what's wrong with our church? Observe. He would observe. That. And then, after he did this, he would submit a report to me for the things that we need to change in order to bring in more people. In order to get these seats full. Yeah. Because if your church is not full, clearly, clearly, something is wrong with your church. Mm. My response to that was this. And I've read article after article, and they all come back to the same thing. You've got to compromise. You've got to be more like the world. You can, you can sum them all up with those two things right there. You've you got to compromise. You've got to be more like the world. You've got to conform to the world. My response to that is this. Just once, I would like for somebody to say the reason your church is not full is because the Bible says that in the last days, perilous times will come. Amen? That in the last days, last days men will be pleasures of God, pleasures of the world, that lovers of pleasure more than... Oh, devil. Somebody smile at him. <laughs> lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. That in the last days there will be a falling away. Many shall depart from the faith. That there will be those that will turn from the truth unto fables. That they will seek for themselves teachers having itching ears. Maybe that's why the truth preaching churches ain't full today. It's because there's more people seeking after entertainment than there is the truth. Amen? There's more people that like to be comfortable in the crowd on, than they do to feel old-fashioned Holy Ghost conviction. Amen. Come on, tell it like it now, I'm not saying that there are not things in churches that need to be changed. And maybe some churches are empty because of certain things that shouldn't be there. But just because a church is not packed out and running out into the street doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. Listen to me. Come on. The closer to the end we get, the fewer there are going to be that are standing for the truth. Amen. You got it. The closer to the end we get, exactly. the harder it's going to be for you to get people to come to church. Exactly. Unless you compromise to what they want. Right. Unless you conform into what they want. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Amen. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion or partnership or participation hath light with darkness? In what agreement, oh I'm sorry, in what concord, in other words, what harmony hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath a believer with an infidel? I mean, what exactly do you have in common that would cause you to fellowship one another? And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Opposite of the world. You see, the modern day church and the, 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 the smart guys that, that are in positions anyway in our mega churches. And our Christian authors say, wait, well, you've got to do things different. The old way is not as good as it used to be. You've got to conform. You've got to be transformed. Same things have got to be changed. Amen? In order for you to win the world, you must be more like the world. That is as far as that is as far from the Bible as heaven is from hell. Amen. Nowhere in the Word of God will you ever find where it tells us to conform or compromise in order to win. Amen. The lost. Come on, preach, brother. You're talking about an oxymoron. You're talking about a contradictory state, contradicting statement. Yes, sir. To be more like the world, to win the world. Come on, preach. The world me. needs to be one to Jesus, Amen. not to itself. Come on. When you win the world with worldly things, you win the world to itself and not to Jesus. Here he talks about an unequal yoke. And he uses that because during that time, and even today we understand it clearly, but during that time it, it, it certainly would have struck a chord within the mind of those that he was talking to. 
Because an unequal yoke would be as if you had two oxen that were yoked together. And one was pulling one way for the sleeves and the other was pulling the other. You see, in order to walk step in step, to walk in time with one another, the oxen were to be equal. When you try and yoke the things of God with the things of the world, it never works. Because the things of the world will always go in the opposite direction of the things of God. Amen. True. Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? And how can the world have harmony with the things of God? It's impossible unless you compromise. Unless, instead of calling man to come out of their sin, we join them in it and compromise the message of the Word of God. Amen. I still believe today that it's about ministry and not entertainment. Amen. I realize there is there has to be a grain of entertainment in it. I don't know how to say that for you to understand it. There has to be something. As a as a preacher, you have to say something that is interesting to keep to keep people's attention, or a certain way to deliver it. You just can't get up there and just. I could get up here this morning and read to you some scripture, and the scripture's good. But if I'm dead or in a doornail. I don't put any feeling in it at all, then I'm probably not going to be able to keep your attention. You're probably going to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to sit there and yell. So there has to be a grain of that in it. But it's more about ministry than it is entertainment. You see, compromise breeds confusion of which God is not the author. Wow. It's not about filling our church. It's about filling heaven. Amen. Amen. Sure. It's not about keeping people in our group or in our pews. It's about keeping people out of hell. Amen. Amen. That's it. Listen to this. It's not about you being popular. Come on, preach, brother. We don't like it whenever people don't like us. Right. But learn to live with it, honey. If you preach and stand on the Word of God, some people ain't going to like you. Amen. That is why Christians are the ones that are discriminated against in our nation today. True. They talk about the homosexuals. Oh, the poor things are so discriminated against. Yeah. They talk about the others of different nationalities and different colors. And different, they're so discriminated against. Yeah. None of them are as discriminated against as Christians are. Amen. I'm talking about Bible-believing Jesus followers. Amen? Exactly. Amen? True. Born again by the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's where the discrimination lies in our nation today. Amen. Very true. It's not about being popular. You won't be. Come on. Amen? True. The more the church conforms to the world, the less effective it becomes. Amen. And the more dangerous it becomes to the souls of men. Right. The more like the world the church becomes, the weaker it becomes. Yeah. So she is pulled by the stronger ox that it has yoked itself to. Come on, break. Listen, the world, the flesh, and the devil are never satisfied. Amen. You can say, we'll compromise a little, and before you know it, you've compromised a lot. Right. Amen. True. And the more you feed it, the stronger it gets. I asked you the question when we started this morning, what did Jesus do in His ministry? You never one time find when Jesus was here on earth, not once, did He ever do it Himself, nor did He instruct His disciples to compromise or to conform to the world. Amen. Say, but Jesus was all about love. Yeah, He loved everybody. Right. But He also rebuked their sin. Oh. The woman that they found in adultery, they called her in an act of adultery, they brought them to Him, and you hear to all of this, Jesus said, drop your rocks. He that was out sin, and you hear this quoted all the time. 
He that's without sin cast the first stone. But they didn't finish reading the rest. Like Paul Harvey used to say, now here's the rest of the story. After he turns to them religious hypocrites and says, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. He writes on the dirt. They drop their stones. They leave. He looks at the woman. He don't tell her, go and live the same way you lived before. Amen? Come on. He turns to the woman and said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Amen. Amen. Jesus rebuked religious exactly. hypocrites and He rebuked sinners. Right. Their sin. Amen. He rebuked their sin. Exactly. He never ever condoned sin. Amen. He looked at her and said, Go and sin no more. He ministered to the sinners. He never once took part in their sin. If he had, he would not have been perfect. He would not have been able to die. You realize that if Jesus had have sinned, he could not have been the sacrifice. Right. Because the sacrifice had to be pure, had to be holy, Amen. had to be without sin. Amen. Well, well, somebody needs to tell them to read the rest of the story. Amen. Amen. Go and sin Amen. no more. So he rebuked sin. Come on. He confronted the self righteous and the sin sick both. When the rich young ruler came to him, and he said, I want to be, I want to be born again. I want to, I want to get to the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus said, Well, what about the commandments? And he said, Well, I followed all of them. Well, he he had left one out, you know, had no other gods before me, because whenever Jesus said, Well, go sell everything that you got, he couldn't get rid of the God that he bowed down to. He went away sad. Amen. Amen. So Jesus never once, and even, listen, even to the religious, the Pharisees and the scribes, Brother Dave. Come on. Brother Billy, if you would just compromise, mm -hmm. you could be part, you could run with the big dogs. I've had people tell me over the years, well, you need to join up with us. If you just change this here, if you just, yeah. if you stop preaching that, you could, you can be, I, I had the opportunity to, to be a pastor of a Baptist church, but if I did, I couldn't speak in tongues. Because he said, if you do, the first time you do, they'll show us both the door. Right. Amen. True. Had the opportunity to join up with the, another denomination that I could tell you the, the name of. They said, well, you just got to change that, that one thing right there. Had an opportunity to join up with another guy. And he said, I, I believe God's called you to preach what I'm preaching. And I thought to myself then, I thought that ain't right because you ain't preaching the truth. Amen. Amen. True. If you just compromise. But Jesus never compromised to right. get in good with the religious people. Come on. You see, that's why we had preachers that compromise because they want to rub elbows with the Pope. Exactly. And whenever you preach that the Pope is not Christ on earth, and you preach that praying to Mary is a sin. It's wrong. It will not get you to heaven. And confessing your sins to the priest. And counting your beats. And doing all your rosary. You won't be invited to dinner at the Pope's house. Right. Amen. <laughs> you never one time find the scribes and the Pharisees inviting Jesus to one of their meetings. All the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, we're going to get together for a meal in the upper room and we're going to discuss theological things. Hey, get Jesus. No, let's don't get Him. He's a troublemaker. He don't get along with us. He don't see things like we see Him. As a matter of fact, Jesus would turn to the scribes and the Pharisees and He would tell them that on the outside you look good. You're like a bunch of graves. On the outside you're white, you're clean looking, but on the inside you're full of dead men bones. Amen. He called them vipers, Brother Dave. He turned to one crowd one day and said, You are of your father, the devil. Amen. He don't sound like no compromising preacher to me. Amen. Come on. Don't sound like he was too interested in compromising. Mm -hmm. Because he was more interested in their soul than he was their favor. Right. Oh, on, that, would, that would preach this morning. Yes. Preachers are more interested in getting a pat on the back they are more interested in getting your tithe. They are more interested in getting you in their pew. They are more interested in getting to fellowship with you than they are telling you the truth. Amen. Amen. That don't make me popular this morning. Not in the world's eyes, but me and God's are right. Amen. 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 That's true. So Jesus didn't compromise. 
When he commissioned his disciples, he never once told them to do whatever you have to do to be popular, to win the lost. That's the mindset of the church. Compromise, conform, be popular, you can win the lost. Be more like the world to win the world. It, it doesn't make any sense. No, instead, he told his disciples to preach the gospel. To go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He told them that they would be hated. Not loved. True. Not received. Where did we ever get the thing that, oh, everybody's got to love me. I can't step on no toes. I can't fend nobody because I want everybody to like me. Yeah. Jesus said they will deliver you up to be killed for my name's sake. Amen. True. He said the world would hate you. Amen. Amen. True. If you don't have some people out there that hate you, you might go to check your you might go to check your relationship with the Lord. Right. Amen. Exactly. You should be hated of all men for my name's sake. True. That's what he told him in, in Matthew ten and twenty two. And trust me, you don't have to go around town saying, Sinner, repent, in order for them to hate you. Amen. Just walk in the truth. Right. Just stand for something. See what kind of response you get from the compromise. I ain't even talking about the world as much as I am the church world. Amen. You get feedback from both, but it's been my experience in 28 years of ministry that you get attacked quicker by the saints. Then you do the sinners, for lack of a better phrase to use. Right. They'll stab you in the back. Yes, sir. Amen. I've had to part ways with some just recently. Because every time I would post something on the internet or every time that I would talk about false doctrine or a false teacher, oh, you're judging. Yeah. Don't you be judging. Who are you? Yeah. I said, well, bye. Yeah. Amen. I ain't got time to argue with you. Amen? Got time. He told them they would be hated, not received. They would be different, not the same. You do not have to make this happen. Just walk in the truth. You'll see it. Conforming to the world to win the world will never work. It never has. It never will. Turn with me to Ephesians 5 and 6. Ephesians 5 and 6. We're not going to get through this. Ephesians 5 and 6. It says, Let no man deceive you with vain words, because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes in darkness, but now are ye light in the, in the light of the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Paul would say, not just not have fellowship with them. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17, where we were at a while ago, said, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not, Brother Billy, you must be in the Old Testament. No, you need to read your Bible. Second Corinthians 6 and 17, Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord. When you come out, not blend with, not conform to, not be transformed by, but whatever you come out from among the world, and you let His light shine, through you. All you have to do is just let His light shine through you. Amen. So literally, how do I do this awesome thing? Read the book and follow it. Amen. Walk in His truth. 1 Peter 2 and 9 says, You are a chosen generation, a royal priest, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that He should show forth the praise that you, that you should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. 1 John 2 and 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The world passeth away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. It's not His will for His church 
to conform and to compromise in order to win the loss. How many people have ever heard the old saying that the end justifies the means? Nobody's heard of it but me. That's the mentality today that no matter what methods we use to get the results, that as long as the result is good, then that that we use to get that result is justified. And that is wrong. Amen. That is wrong. There's only one means today that God has commissioned for the winning of the lost. And it's not your drama teams. It's not your special clubs and your cliques. It's the preaching of the Word of God. It's the preaching of the cross and Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Paul said, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ, the cross of Christ, should be made of none effect. Paul said, I come to you preaching the cross because if I do anything else, it may take the spotlight off of Jesus. The spotlight, trust me, in the church world today has been taken off of Jesus and put onto man and entertainment and music. That's what's so dangerous about your entertainment and your worldly music and your strobe lights and your contemporary atmosphere and your drama teams and your dance teams and all of these things that go on because they take the spotlight off of the cross of Christ. That is the only hope for mankind today, His cross. His finished work. Not that piece of wood, but what He did there on that cross. That's the only hope for the world today. It's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. But that is the, that is the least thing we hear about in big churches today. We hear of everything else and we've conformed and we've been transformed to the worldly image to where we are no more effective. Come on. In the world, we entertain. The world entertains. Right. We make them feel good. The world makes them feel good. Amen. But if we want to see lives changed, we must present to them Jesus Christ and Him crucified, the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. He is the life changer today. Amen. Not all of the things that we've got going on in our churches. Compromise in order to get to your goal, which even if your goal is to win souls, compromise right. will not get you the result Amen. that God wants. Amen. Because what you will win is a bunch of shallow people whose roots go no deeper than that. And they will be blown about by every wind of doctrine. True. And that's dangerous because you'll lose more than you win. Yes. You will lose more than you win. Absolutely. Amen. You will lose more than you win. That's right. I guess, Lord willing, next week we will carry on with this popular sermon. Hallelujah. I'm sure it'll <laughs> I'm sure it will be it'll go over very well oh, yeah. with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Be requested. Amen. They'll probably yeah. want copies of it on C T yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Compromise. It's never We've never been commissioned to compromise. Amen. We were never commissioned to conform. Right. But to live godly in an evil and dark world. Amen. 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 To let the light of Jesus and His love. Say, well, Brother Billy, you have to show them love. If you think not telling them the truth is showing them love, you are badly deceived. Right. It takes more love to tell somebody the truth mm -hmm. than Amen. it does to lie to them. Right. Amen. Yeah. Than it does to keep the truth from them. Amen. Amen. That's right. Someone else this morning have something Amen. before we go.